Shalom, shalom. I'm Barbara, and I'm your host today, and also Brother Pete agreed to read with me today. And our presentation is about Saturn, the Roman god. Saturnalia is named after Saturn, and also Saturday is named after Saturn. A holiday named after Saturn. Happy Saturnalia, reason for the season. <clears throat> Maybe you haven't heard about that name before, and this is from December 17 to 24 from the Romans. Saturnalia, the Romans honored the god Saturn with a week-long festival in December, and it was called Saturnalia, and it was from December 17 to 24. Saturn's great festival, the Saturnalia, became the most popular of Roman festivals, and its influence is still felt in the celebration of the Christmas and the Western world's New Year. The Saturnalia was originally celebrated in December 17, but then it was later extended uh, seven more days, and it was the merriest festival of the year. And this is from Britannica, and I'll leave all these uh, links below for you. How did the Romans celebrate Saturnalia? During Saturnalia, work and business came to a halt. Schools and courts of law closed. The normal social patterns were suspended. People decorated their homes with wreaths and other greenery and shed their traditional togas in favor of colorful clothes. Instead of working, Romans spent Saturnalia gambling, singing, playing music, feasting, socializing, and giving each other gifts. Wax taper candles called serai or seri were common gifts during Saturnalia to signify light returning after the solstice. And that from history.com. And the last day of Saturnalia, celebrations known as the Siglaria, many Romans gave their friends and loved ones small terracotta figurines known as Singulera, I'm probably saying those wrong, uh, which may have referred back to older celebrations involving human sacrifice. And this is part of that same quote. So these various ancient Roman celebrations of Saturnalia honored this most bloodthirsty god, Saturn. And he was also frequently known as holding babies, and he required child sacrifice. And it said that he um, even ate his own children. He was a very evil, evil god. And the ancient sources tell us that this actual child sacrifice to Saturn was pretty common. The ancients believed that by appeasing the gods, things would go well for them. Giving up one's own child, which was highly valued, would bring about the best possible result. The better the sacrifice, the better the result. This kind of primitive, superstitious thinking runs throughout the ancient world. And the heathen nations offered up their children to Molech. We've heard about that in the Bible and in history. And uh, Molech is the biblical name of a Canaanite god associated with child sacrifice through fire. Each Christmas, parents sacrifice their children's well-being to the gods of prosperity. They destroy their faith in Jehovah by teaching them the lie about Santa. And they teach them that Santa can see them when they're good and when they're bad. And they teach them the whole lie. And then that destroys their faith in their Heavenly Father and what they've been taught. But here they send them to sit on Santa's lap. And it looks pretty familiar to the sacrificing to Molech. Molech was the pagan god of prosperity that was a cast-iron, pot-bellied god. At the time of the winter solstice on the ancient calendar, they had a public child mass. Mass literally meant sacrifice in this context. The priests stoked the iron image of the enthroned Molech with wood and burning pitch, which turned the idol into a cherry-red furnace. 
People made long lists of their desires and recited them to the God of Prosperity just before they put their infant child into the red-hot lap of their God. As the babies were incinerated during the December 25th child mass, the people were assumed that their sacrifices would be rewarded in the coming year. Baal or Molech or Chemish, Chemosh or Saturn, the name may change, but their bloodthirsty appetite for the most acceptable offering of infants does not. So is the world honoring the Roman god Saturn by keeping Christmas or Saturnalia? Western cultures today derive many of their traditional celebrations of midwinter from Saturnalia. The Christian holiday of Christmas especially owes many of its traditions to the ancient Roman festival, including the time of year Christmas is celebrated. And that's from uh, history.com about Saturnalia. Are Sabbatarians honoring the Roman god Saturn by keeping Saturday or Saturn's Day? Saturday is named after Saturn. Maybe you haven't thought about that before. And Saturn is the god of time. He's often showed holding uh, time uh, and holding a sickle. Naming Saturday. Saturday is named after the Roman god the planet, and the planet Saturn. And uh, Saturday is the only day of the week that retained its Roman origin in English. All the others were changed, but Saturn Day stayed the same. And that is a quote there. And over here on this side, the weekday Saturday, Latin Saturni Dias was named for Saturn. How did we get Saturday on our modern calendar? Due to the Roman Emperor Constantine's Sunday Law issued in A.D. 321, the Jews were forced to completely abandon the lunar calendar. Constantine's planetary calendar placed Sunday as an exalted day of worship. Man was forced to worship on a pagan calendar. Saturday was moved to the seventh day of the week. Saturday, <clears throat> Saturn Day, was the first day of the planetary week. Constantine changed the order of the planetary week to help the Jews adapt to Roma, Rome's new weekly cycle. At the same time, he elevated Sunday to be a worship day. Saturday, or Saturn Day, was the first day of the planetary week. Saturday was moved to the seventh day of the week, and Sunday was placed at the first day of the week. Sunday, the venerable day of the sun, was exalted as the day of worship by Constantine. Saturday, or Dea Saturni, the day of Saturn, was the first day of the planetary week. Not the seventh. As the god of agriculture, he can be seen in this preeminent position of importance, holding his sickle, excuse me, his symbol, a sickle. Next, on the second day of the planetary week, is seen the sun god with rays of light emanating from his head. Sunday was originally the second day of the planetary week and was known as Dea Solis, and that from uh, Nashville, Tennessee Southern Publishing Association. We see in the middle of this figure a calendar, or yes, a calendar, that was taken from a Roman bathhouse uh, called Trajan's House, uh, Trajan's Bath, built in 104 AD. And across the top, we see the figures representing each day. And we see Saturn, Saturn Day, or Saturn I, there in the first position holding his sickle, and as we've said, the Sun Day with the rays coming out of his head at the second position. Of course, this was before Constantine's realignment of the week. Roman Catholic scholars have always known the truth of the full history behind the modern week 
and the use of the planetary week terminology, that is, Saturday. As conservative Roman Catholic scholar and apologist Patrick Madrid stated in a radio interview, quote, the calendar that we follow, including Seventh-day Adventist, is not only a calendar that was devised by the Catholic Church, but also it's a calendar that's based upon the solar year, not the lunar year. And the Jewish calendar that was observed in the time of Christ follows a lunar calendar, which is several days short of a solar year. So the great irony is that even the Seventh-day Adventists themselves are not worshiping on exactly the same Sabbath day as the Jews of the time of Christ. And we have a link below there for those who want to follow that reference. It is true. So I'm just going to summarize. Roman Catholic scholars have always known the truth about the Gregorian calendar. The calendar that the world follows today is a calendar devised by the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Gregorian calendar was created by Pope Gregory the 13th and named after him in 1582. The lunar calendar was outlawed in 321 AD by the Roman Emperor Constantine. And Daniel 7.25 warns us what would happen. He said, he'll speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change times and laws. I encourage you to come back next week.